Hey, this is Pastor Jeff, and uh, this is Wednesday. Typically at church, we have a Wednesday night Bible study, but we've not been able to do that for the past couple weeks. And I said, you know, I kind of miss um, just having something throughout the week to kind of, um, I don't know, keep our minds focused on the Lord, if you will. And so um, I know Ellie, when we get back, is going to start a Bible study through the book of James. But until then, I kind of wanted to just maybe focus on the Bible itself. And so this week, next week, and maybe the next couple weeks, or who knows how long, we'll be going, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through something I put together that basically asks the question, what is the Bible and why should I trust it? So tonight we'll ask, what is the Bible? And I've got three different videos that we'll have up for this. Um, next week we'll look at why should I trust the Bible? What makes the Bible different than any other religious book out there? Then we'll look at the week after that, what does inerrancy mean? Mm, that's a big word. And then we'll ask, what is context and why is it important for us in Bible study? So the first thing I'd like to do in our first video for tonight is ask the question, what is the Bible? You know, let's say, let's say you're talking to someone about Christianity and, you know, we live in a culture that is uh, biblically illiterate. They're not as in tune with scripture as they used to be. Um, and so there might be people that you legitimately bump into who don't really know what the Bible is. And so they ask you, well, tell me what the Bible is. What answer would you give them? Would you have maybe a, a cute, pithy uh, phrase or saying that you would give them? Or would you have something with substance? If someone asked me, this is how I would answer. I'll be honest, this uh, isn't something I came up with. This comes from a book called Hidden in the Heart. A Catechism for Children that um, a professor of mine in seminary, Dr. Friedman, uh, gave as a gift to us in one of his classes. And it's really the best answer I've ever seen in my life for what is the Bible. So I'm going to give you the answer, and then we're going to break that down into three different parts, and we'll talk about each part in a different video. So this is how I would answer that question. Jeff, what is the Bible? The Bible is 66 God-inspired books that teach us about God and how we can be holy as He is holy. And so let's break that down into three parts. So the first part that we want to talk about is this idea that the Bible is 66 books. When we look at the Bible, we probably rightly think, oh, that's just, this is one book, the book of the Bible. I mean, it, it looks like one book. If you were to see this, this is my beat up archaeological study Bible. It's, I've had this for a long time and it, it, it's kind of, it looks like I've had it for a while. But anyway, when we look at this, it looks no different from any other book that we would pick up. But the reality is, this isn't just one book, this is 66 books. The way, that I use, or the way that I phrase it is, this is a volume of books. So we have one volume, 66 books. And so, you know, I can understand that. Like, we have the Chronicles of Narnia in one volume. So it's seven books, and it's all bound together in one place. I have the complete volume of Sherlock Holmes books in one volume. So I don't have a bunch of Sherlock Holmes stuff. I just have one very thick book. And that's how it is with the Bible. Now, why would it be important for us to um, remind ourselves that this is 66 books? Well, when it comes to talking about the Lord working in time and space, I keep stepping on my cord and unplugging it. I'll try not to. But when we talk about God stepping in time and space, someone might say, this seems a little incredulous to me, that God's real and that he's working in real human history, that doesn't make sense. Where Can you prove to me that this is true? And we would say, well, I can prove to you that God exists in the Bible. And you'd say, well, why should I trust the Bible? Well, because the Bible says we should trust it. Well, why should I trust the Bible? Because God says that it's his word. Well, how do I know that that's God's word? Well, the Bible says it is. And we just, if our answer is constantly, well, the Bible says the Bible says, we could be accused of circular reasoning. For example, um, What's the best restaurant in the world? Casa del Taco in Chillicothe, Ohio. Well, why is it the best restaurant? Because I said so. Well, why do you think it's the best restaurant in the world? Because it is. Well, why do you think it is? Because I said so. Well, why do you... And it's just going in circles over and over again. But when we begin to look at the Bible, not just as one book, but as a series of, or as a collection of books, a volume of books, that each of these, or that this collection stretches over 1,600 years we begin to realize that this isn't like any normal volume that we might think of. And so instead of just saying, 
you know, this, this single book records God stepping in time and space. Now we can say, oh, there's, six, there's about 60 different times that God has stepped into, uh, 60 different periods of time, I guess would be the better way of saying it, where God has stepped into human time and space, and those have been recorded. That whenever God stepped into the people of Israel's time in Egypt, Moses recorded it. And so that represents one period of time. Or we might say when the people of Israel are scattered all over the world, God steps in to rescue them, and that's recorded at a different period of time. And so over the course of these 1,600 years, we have different authors from different backgrounds who are chronicling when God steps into human time and space. Now imagine, if you would with me, there's a car accident. You know, Hopefully there's not a car accident, but let's pretend that there is one. And um, 60 some people, or more than 40 people, because there's more than 40 authors, so we'll go with that. More than 40 people go out, and because of, and over this, they end up writing 60 different pieces talking about this accident that they saw. Now, let's say those 40 different authors of those 60 pieces of literature are called into court. And the judge says, okay, I need to know who is a witness to this accident. And those 40 people stand up and say, okay, we represent the 60 pieces of literature that are out there because we saw it with our own eyes what happened at that intersection. Now imagine if the judge were to say, you know what, I don't like what you have to say. I'm going to immediately dismiss you. You're out. Your witness is invalid because I don't agree with your lifestyle. I don't agree with who you are. And basically, I don't like what you have to say. Now we would say that seems unethical. That seems wrong. You can't just dismiss people because you don't like what they have to say. And so when it comes to the scripture, we have 40 different authors, over 40 different authors represented here, who have written in total a, a collection of over 60 some pieces of literature. And these different pieces of literature uh, represent God stepping into human history at different times in different locations and doing things. And what's interesting is even though we have 66 different books written by 40 different authors, and maybe a good way to say this is, if you like franchises, and you watch a series of movies over, I don't know, maybe the Marvel Cinematic Universe would be a good, a, a good illustration. You know, there's 20-some movies in this collection of movies, but you get some that seem very different from others, and that's because a different director stepped in. And it's kind of the same, but you can really tell someone else did this. this. This seems strikingly different. This isn't the serious tone of these other ones. This is just a goofy comedy now. So we might expect, if we have, six, if we have over 40 different authors who have written you know, 60 pe over 60 pieces of literature, we might expect these to be wildly different. We might say, well, when you read Genesis, you're not going to see the same kind of themes as you would when you read... I don't know, the book of Job, for example. But the reality is, when you read the Bible, and let's say you were to do it in one sitting, I have no idea how long that would take, but let's say you read the Bible in a very tight period of time, you would realize that there's a lot of themes that weave through all of them. And even though these do represent different authors, there's times when they sound very similar. And it's like they're being guided towards one goal. And that these themes and these purposes and illusions and you know one of the things that's cool with the bible is there's so many little illusions that are woven in that you might not think about till maybe you read a commentary or hear a pastor preach on it you're like oh i never would have connected these two passages together and it's like somebody is behind the scenes guiding all these guys together to get them to the same point which is where we're going to go with our next video we're going to talk about what does it mean to say that these 66 books are guided and inspired by God? So that'll be on here today. That'll be part two of um, asking what is the Bible. So I hope you'll, you'll stick with that. And then we'll, um, I'll, keep, I'll quit rambling and just turn it off right now.